Okay, so now in this new step, the idea is to uh, include or add our joints to our uh, simulation. Joints will allow us to, for instance, move uh, uh, different kind of objects like the gripper or the wheels and so on. So in this particular robot we have joints for the left wheel and the right wheel. We have a vertical joint here that will make uh, the caster uh, support uh, to rotate and also we have a horizontal joint here that will actual, uh, the actual uh, caster will spin and we have also two, uh, in this case, uh, two vertical joints here that will be uh, for uh, the grippers. so they will be uh, actually uh, related with the servos moving the, uh, the gripper, okay? So let's start by creating uh, a simple, a simple uh, joint, so let's add a joint here, a revolute joint, all joints are revolute in this, in this robot, okay? So let's add a revolute joint, uh, yeah, let's move the joint to the proper layer, okay, that one, yeah, and that's the joint. As I said, the, the, the size of the joint is not that relevant, so I used to make it quite small, quite more smaller, like that one and that one, so it will be just a small joint like that one, yeah, or maybe even that one, yeah, small joint, but if you take a look to the joint, let's zoom, Okay, if you, look at, uh, if you look at the joint, it's vertical and we would like to attach a joint here, so the joint is just an axis that makes this wheel spin, so we need to rotate it and if you take a look, we need to rotate it on the y axis of the joint reference frame, so we go to the orientation, rotation, own frame and then we select, this is a, 90, a positive 90 degrees rotation, and that will make the joint horizontal, okay? And now we want this axis to be just right in the middle of the wheel, so in order to compute where the wheel is or to know exactly where is the center of the wheel, remember that we have a, a trick in which we select the joint and then we have, if you, if you click shift and select the wheel, yeah, and then you go for position, you can set the y coordinate to be equal and uh, in this case also the z coordinate to be equal and the x coordinate to be equal, okay? This would actually take the same effect as applying this or pushing this vector, uh, this button there, okay? So that's the joint, okay? That's the way we want the joint to be. Okay, so we have to do the same thing with the other wheel and also here with in this case, a vertical joint, for instance, let's add a new one for, uh, that's uh, the new joint, let's move it to this layer here, uh, let's change the size, okay, and let's make uh, this joint to be exactly right there, so we want to be right there, yeah, that's the correct position, we can put it upwards if we want, but that's fine, yeah, and we, we have to do the same with the caster wheel here, okay, and we have to do the same with the servo ones, but the servo ones is a special case, let's uh, switch to this view, because we don't have a center, this object here we have, the center is right there, okay? But we want the axis to be right there, okay? So in order to do that, we need to create an axillary or temporary uh, object from the servo shape, and that's rather quite easy. We select the servo, we go for the uh, shape editing mode, there, we click shift, and we select those triangles there and we create or we extract a cylinder, that object will be temporary, okay? Something we use in order to actual, actually to get the correct position of the, of the, 
joint we want, okay? So now, if, where's the cylinder? That one. Okay, this is the cylinder, I'll just simply move it on the other layer, so I, now I invert the layers. So here it is, that's the cylinder, you can see it, okay? So now we have an object there, exactly where we want, we can create an, a joint and place it exactly in, the, in that place. So we have to add the joint, again a revolute joint, uh, we change uh, the layer, there it is, and uh, we reduce the size, there it is, so that's the joint, so now we have to select shift or click shift and then select the object we want, where we want to move it, and then we can just simply apply, I'm sorry, I have three objects selected, uh, let me undo, yeah, so I selected the wrong one, so that's the joint, that's uh, the auxiliary or, oh sorry, this one and this one, yeah, sorry, and then we apply it, there it is, okay, and now once we have that, we can remove this cylinder here, because we don't need it anymore, okay, and just, just to conclude with this video, the next step, or the, 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 the next step we need to do in this video is to set the joints in a proper mode, okay? So, uh, for the wheels we have joints that will be controlled uh, on velocity. Uh, the ones with the caster wheel will be in free mode, okay? No, no motor attached to them. And these ones will be controlled with position, so we can set their standard servo so we can control the position of, uh, of the grip. So, in order to do that, this joint here, for instance, we need to access to the properties, by default was created in a force torque mode, that's fine, but we need to enable a motor in order to be actuated, okay? But we don't need, in this case, the control loop enabled, because it will be controlled by velocity. For this joint here, yeah, that one here, will be in torque force mode, that's fine, and motor won't be enabled because it's not actuated, it's free, okay? And finally, in this joint here, will be also in torque force mode, but we need to enable the motor and also enable the position control loop, okay? The, co the position control loop. So this is the proper settings for the joints for, in order to work with our robot. Okay, so please complete the steps and I'll see you on my next video.